The most important reason turns out to be initial endowment. By that I mean the following. Countries that tended to have a high child mortality rate in 1970 also tend to improve faster than countries that had a better or lower child mortality rate in 1970. That applies both for the health indicator and for the education indicator. So countries that tended to have low education attainment in 1970 tend to grow faster. The second most important variable, now, and now we're actually coming to a policy variable, is uh, the level of public spending per capita. So countries whose governments spend more on health and education facilities and teachers and equipment tend to improve their health and education rates faster. A third factor, also a little bit controversial, is the food adequacy status of the population. Countries whose uh, food supply or caloric intake, actually that's the real, that's the measure, caloric intake is uh, higher uh, tend to do better than countries where the average caloric intake is lower. Public health spending to GDP ratios in South Asia are 1% of GDP, averaged over these 40 years. Right? In the Middle East, they were 2.3%. Public spending per capita per year on education in South Asia was the equivalent of only $8.00. This compared with $250 in the Middle East. So there's a very good reason why you see much faster improvement in health and education in the Middle East region. They just spent a lot more. And of course, many other things need to be done too. It's not that you just make the money available. Uh, the whole uh, public schooling setup, teacher training, uh, teacher motivation, making sure teachers teach in class rather than do something else. There's a whole sort of set of related issues but you're not even going to get close to what you need without making a public political commitment to spend 6% of GDP on education. And the same thing is true of health. Normally you would expect as countries get richer, they'd spend more. And you do find that relationship. But what you also find is Pakistan and India in particular are huge uh, negative outliers in this sample. In other words, for their incomes per capita, they spend way less than the average country at their level of income would. So there is something in the political setup of these two countries where the choices they make are not health and education friendly. Economic growth, uh, education and health improvements do not guarantee stability and happiness uh, or even dignity. And you may find that societies tend to erupt in various ways, not because they are poor or hungry or uh, unemployed. There may be other reasons, including uh, some of the factors that have come to light in the Middle East in particular, which is the denial of basic human rights or political and civic rights to populations and the lack of dignity for working people in various countries. So I don't know the answer, what determines all of that, but clearly improvement in health and education and actually in the Middle East a fairly decent standard of living on average uh, did not save them from the political eruptions that we witnessed uh, during 2010-2015.